Mass Effect Legendary Edition is finally here, bundling together the entire Mass Effect trilogy with every piece of single player DLC to go along with it. But it's more than a simple port and uprez. Legendary Edition makes a litany of changes, some small and some, well, that have a massive effect on how the game is played. Come on, come on, you get it? No? That's enough. Anyway, here's the list of the 10 biggest changes in Mass Effect Legendary Edition. Number one, skippable elevators. All right, we're kicking this off with the number one improvement right here. Mass Effect was notorious for not only having long elevator rides that essentially served as glorified loading screens, but also having a ton of them. Sometimes one right after the other. Legendary Edition mercifully gives the option to skip the elevator rides, which is better than just outright making them shorter, because there are still some genuinely charming conversations between characters that happen in these elevators, so, you know, maybe don't bail on every single one. I'm pleased that the imminent destruction of all organic life has improved your career opportunities. Number two, better controls. One thing you'll notice in this list is that most of these things are gonna be targeted at Mass Effect 1, since that's the game that need the most work. But one of the things that feels immediately apparent is the fact that it generally controls much better. This is due to a number of improvements, including better cover mechanics, more intuitive controller mapping, better aiming with more precise reticles, an improved aim down sights camera, and just overall better responsiveness to your inputs. Number three, better HUD. Mass Effect 1's HUD has seen a complete overhaul to bring it more in line with the other games in the series. Gone are the pips of shield energy that didn't accurately convey how many more shots you could take before you lost your shield, replaced by a shield bar right above your health. The most vitally important info is more immediately apparent, like the health of both you and your squad mates as opposed to it being crammed into a corner with a bunch of other info. Number four, cooldown reductions. One of the most brutal aspects of Mass Effect 1 was that if you used a metagel, you were unable to use another one for a very, very long time. That cooldown has been adjusted to be much faster, along with other cooldown reductions across the board. Number five, unlocked weapon proficiency. In the original Mass Effect, your access to weapons was largely dependent on what class you chose at the beginning of the game. If a Vanguard decided all of a sudden that they wanted to use a sniper rifle, for instance, they'd have to make do with a sniper rifle that couldn't zoom and had no targeting reticle. That's no longer the case in Legendary Edition. Any class can use any weapon right from the start of the game, which is great. That said, there are still incentives to stick with the weapons that your class is good at due to the talent points that you're able to add into those weapons. Number six, individual squad orders. In Mass Effect 2 and 3, one helpful thing that you could do was order individual party members to head towards a specific point. That's now something you can also do in Mass Effect 1 with the left and right buttons on the D-pad, giving you a bit more tactical control when it comes to combat. Number seven, the Mako. The Mako is one of the most divisive aspects in the first Mass Effect game, and as such, it is also one of the central focuses when it comes to improvements in the Legendary Edition. It still retains some of the bounciness, but overall feels much weightier than before, making it much easier to control in some of the high-pressure situations that you often encounter while driving it. In addition to that, it's been given a boost to speed up some of the slower bits, the shields recharge faster, you can now actually move while you're repairing it, and thankfully, you don't just immediately die when you touch lava this time around. Number 8, Default Femship. In an effort to keep a more consistent look across all three games for the default version of Femship, the canon version for Mass Effect 3 has been made the default Femship for Mass Effects 1 and 2 as well. Number 9, Multiplayer and Galactic Readiness. The multiplayer mode for Mass Effect 3 is no more, which presents a bit of an issue because it was one of the ways players would improve their Galactic Readiness level, which was a measure of how prepared they were to tackle the final mission without dire consequences and casualties. The response to this is a rebalancing of the Galactic Readiness system that allows players to build up their Galactic Readiness by simply playing through the other two games in the collection. Those who play through Mass Effect 1 and 2 and then carry that save over to Mass Effect 3 will have a leg up on their galactic readiness compared to those who just jump straight into Mass Effect 3. Bioware has said that if you don't play through Mass Effect 1 and Mass Effect 2, you should expect to basically have to complete every piece of side content in order to not suffer major losses in the ending. And finally, number 10, rebalance XP and level scaling. The level cap in the original Mass Effect was 60 but in order to hit that cap, you had to do multiple playthroughs on the same character. That's been changed with a new level scaling mode called Legendary Mode, which uses a 1 to 30 level range instead of the 1 to 60 range, thereby allowing players to complete most of the content by the end of the game and still experience what it's like to be at the highest level. 
This is not a completely exhaustive list of all the changes in Mass Effect Legendary Edition, but it is a snapshot of the big highlights. In any case, now is the best time to revisit this classic RPG trilogy, or for newcomers, the perfect invitation to board the Normandy for the first time. For even more Mass Effect, check out our comparison of how the original Mass Effect stacks up against the Legendary Edition from a performance perspective. And for everything else, keep it here on IGN.